Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and this is part number three of our five-part series where we're looking at the idea of sharing the story of Jesus. And today, we're going to focus on testifying with assurance. We can have that by the simple principle we're about to talk about right now. But before we do it, I want to remind you, please subscribe to our channel. We want to stay in touch with you and you uh, staying in touch with us. But also, we want this to go to more people. If you love someone, if you know someone who needs God's love, please share this and forward it to them so that they can be blessed too. So with that said, Father, we want to pray now in the name of Jesus that you'd speak to our hearts and we love you. Amen. Testifying with assurance. Uh, I know, unfortunately, I fall into the trap a lot of times when I'm thinking of my testimony of making sure it sounds good making sure it's it's just a little bit better than the person maybe who's going to share theirs before or after me or at least something that you know I, people will look at and just say really that's it that's all you got that happens in our natural experience but remember by the spirit what we have been asked by Jesus to do like he asked John to do ultimately and like he asked that that man who was delivered from demonic possession that we studied in the previous study he just told them to tell what you know and that really is, is, is the, the thrust of testifying with assurance. Tell what you know, period. We're not supposed to testify relative to someone else's. We're not supposed to give witness to what has happened in our life because of the witness of someone who's going to come after us or who came before. Think about it. If you were in court and if you were basing the, 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 the witness testimony of, of, I don't know, witness number four, and you've got three of them before. Do you think witness number four is sitting there listening in the gallery or sitting there listening somewhere and think like, wow, you know, I, I really got to tell them how the robbery went down or man, I have to really make sure I describe, okay, this is what color the car was because you know, it, no, all that the examiner is going to ask you to do, whether it's for the plaintiff or against the, the, the again, or in the defense, whatever, this what did you see? What did you see? What happened? That's all they want to know. The rest of that stuff is left up to the, the judge to adjudicate it, for the jury to decide. But our responsibility is just to tell what we know. What have we seen? And let that be enough, everybody. Because if it's enough, we'll remember what John 5.11 says when he says, He answered in them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. This was the man in John 5 who the Lord rose up from his bed. I think he'd been there for like 40 years or something. And he got up and he walked and they were challenging him saying, you know what happened or who did this? He just says, look, this guy came to, to the one who made me that you see, right? He just told me to get up and walk and I walked. He told what he knew. That's it. That's all you got to do when it comes to giving a testimony. Testify to what you saw. He did it in John 5. This brother did it here in John 9. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, I, you know what? Now I see. That's testifying with assurance. He testified with such assurance. If you read there in John 9, he eventually got thrown out of the church. But thank you, Jesus. He got thrown out of the church and into the arms of Christ. Because Christ met him there on the street and he said, what happened? And he said, you know what? I, 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 I want to meet the man who actually did this. And he says, the one who you're looking at is me. So when you testify and when you testify with an assurance, not always is it going to be accepted. Not always is it going to be welcomed news. But you've got to remember that even if they throw you out, remember that the enemy is throwing you out and into the arms of Christ. He will keep you. I hear the testimony of this young lady who was made a decision to accept Christ and her father in, in, in anger and in this demonic rage threw her into a room and she stayed there for six months. The only way she survived was by her siblings sneaking pieces of food and water to her. When she came out, she was unable to look at light. She had medical conditions, but there's a smile on her face, a beautiful smile even today, that she is still a Christian. And the assurance of what she shared, even to her crazy father, was that I know someone who loves me and I know one, someone who's caring for me. And that is a testimony of assurance, not greatness, not the testimony of affluence, but a testimony of assurance. Because 1 Corinthians 15, 1, remember, even this apostle, this great man, but again, just a man. Paul says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. I tell you what has happened to me, which also you've received, and wherein ye stand. 
Paul, his testimony was a testimony of assurance. Nobody could debate or argue or deny what Jesus has done for him. And, and that's why Paul could give his testimony. And you know what's beautiful is that a testimony based on what you know is a testimony that will stand the test of all time, the test of all doubt, even the test of all persecution, because it's what Jesus has done, period. So tell what you know, period.